Okay, uh, let me get rid of the uh, doc because that's going to record too, probably. Uh, we have this black and white picture. Uh, we have a guide right here. I leave them sometimes because I forget to tell students about them. See that double arrow? When you're in the move tool, especially, you can get that double arrow. You can move the guides out of the way. If you want to bring them back, you can go to view rulers and you can pull guides from the rulers. This is just an aside. This is something that you should know you can do. These are the rulers. I think I have it set up on pixels. I can right click inside the rulers and change it to inches. If I want my count to start from like the left corner, which is a good idea, I can grab from up here in the upper left corner to the corner of my document. And now see where zero is? I'm going to move it right there. And then I'm going to move this here. And there is my intersection at the zero point. If you uh, want to, there's a lot of things in Photoshop now. There's a line tools and everything. We're not going to cover that right now. But I just wanted you to know about guides. If you don't want to see them, it's a toggle. Click rulers off or command R, command R. Control R if you're on a PC or on a Mac here. Um, I don't want the guides to show, so I'm going to go view, show, and see guides is checked. I'll uncheck it by clicking, and they're gone. They, I can bring them back by going back to view and click um, show. Show guides. There you have it. So I'm going to go back and hide guides right now. So we have this black and white image, and what you're, what the, this, this is kind of an aside, but but now we're into the image. We are going to tint this image. When you have a black and white image, um, some of the color adjustments won't work the same as they would on a color image. Now, as Photoshop gets more sophisticated, you have more options, I've noticed, with the new uh, cloud version of Photoshop. I'm going to bring the layers over here and the channels over here. These are two, I would really, if you're following this tutorial, you should really do the same because you want to see what's happening in your channels panel and in your layers panel. Now, I think I think I have the biggest uh, thumbnails. This is the thumbnail. See this little square thing? That's the thumbnail. Let me check panel options. Yes, the biggest one is checked. I don't always work with the biggest one checked, but for teaching purposes, it's really good. I do double click it and then I call it cafe. Oops, double click. Cafe. Oops. That'd be nice if I could type. Cafe. Then I'm going to highlight it and lock it so it doesn't move. That way I can lock it and unlock it if I want. You really, this is completely non-destructive colorizing of this picture. I think I'm going to move these over here because we're going to need room for this is channels, don't forget. And this is layers. Layers, channels. Layers, channels. Um, we are going to need the adjustments and we're going to be colorizing this. But first, we can't see how many of these adjustments are grayed out. That's telling us we can't use those. So I'm going to change this grayscale image. See, it's only got one channel. I'm going to go up here to image. The very first one is mode. See where it says grayscale? I'm going to change that to RGB. It's not going to change the color of the actual picture, but it's going to give me more available adjustments. Now, look at all those adjustments that lit up. Some of them will work, some of them won't, but now you have way more stuff available. Look at your channels. This is your blue channel, your green channel, your red channel, and RGB is the composite channel, all of them together. Now, 
in the exercise, if you watch the lion exercise or you were in class, which would be nice, we put levels above the main image. This over here is the levels adjustment. I'm going to click that and notice here's our histogram. Here's our layer. Now this is our properties panel. I can click auto and it will auto level this picture. I don't know that it did much. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it did a little. Did a little. If you want to make it a little more contrasty, you can pull the arrows under here. The light and dark tones. You can move the arrow, the middle arrow. Remember, this is non-destructive, so you can always change this. It's a good idea to keep this adjustment layer above your picture. Uh, with adjustment layers, order does matter. It does. It will impact the colors that you give the picture. That's why we're also going to learn even more about editing layer masks, and we're going to work with alpha channels. So here's the RGB picture. Here's our picture. Now let's say I want to colorize the cafe letters. So I'm going to, here's my tools. Let's move this over a little bit. Here's my tools. It's an eraser now. I don't want eraser. I want my magic wand. I'm going to get the zoom tool and zoom into the cafe. I'm going to hold the space bar. That way I'll stay in the zoom tool. Hold the space bar. Now I'm going to hit the W to get the magic wand. And if you notice, I have my tolerance at 42. That may be too much. I don't know. I'm going to hold the shift key to add to selection. That's good enough because we're going to, we're going to make it ah, undo command Z or control Z if you're on a PC. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to fix it with quick mask. So don't worry about it. There, see that's good enough. Now what we want to do is go over here to our toolbar and almost at the very bottom. There's that square right under the color chips with the circle. There's, and mine happens to be blue because that's the last color I made, the quick mask. I can see where I need to clean it up. Now remember, when you're starting out, you really should stick with black and white because you don't want to make a thin or translucent mask yet. It'll just get you into trouble, trust me. Um, I'm going to get a paintbrush. There's my black and white. Now that's an awfully big brush. So I'm going to use my bracket key, left bracket key, to make it smaller. And I need white, and I do have white on the end of my brush to get rid of the blue in the middle of the C. Now I, I did a little too much, see? So now I'm going to hit the X key to put black in the foreground, and I'm going to fix that. And then I'm going to hit the X key to get white, and I'm going to get rid of some of the blue. This is, get, this is making it a better, cleaner selection. The F. Um, Let's see, some of the E. And you have to go back and forth. There's no magic button, or very few. Um, every now and then you get lucky. So I am going to hit X one more time. This is the neon. And that looks okay, so I'm going to undo that. Now there is my selection. I can see a little problem right there. I'm going to go to the zoom tool, zoom in. See that? Now if I go back to quick mask, see I can see it now. I'm going to go to brush. Do I have white? No, I have black. If I paint with black, it's going to add more blue. I want to get rid of that blue, so I'm painting with white. Um, yeah, that's better. Double click to go to 100%. Get out of quick mask, and there's my marching ants. Now I want to save those in the channels panel. 
When you save something in the channels panel, it's called an alpha channel. So I'm going to go save, select, save selection. And I'm just going to go C space F space, oops, A F E space. So I'll know it's the letters, cafe letters. There we go. Now it says new channel. It's going to make a channel in here. It's The type will not be italicized, which means it's an alpha channel. I'm going to click OK, and there's our alpha channel with the letters. I'm on the levels, and I want to colorize the letters. So I'm going to go over here to hue saturation. And if I start moving these around, nothing's happening. That's because with hue saturation, it wants color. There needs to be color there for it to change color. But if you want to tint it, you click this little box that has colorized next to it. Now you start out with a color. You go green and then saturate it. And there you have nice green letters. So there you have it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the sign. Now this isn't perfect, but I'm going to go and get the polygon lasso. Let me move everything over. It looks like I'm getting kind of out of here. There. Um, polygon lasso. I'm going to start up here. Click, click, click. As you see, this has curved edges, but since we haven't gotten to paths yet, um, this will do just fine. And I'm clicking away, making the sign. And I'm back where I started, so I see the little circle. And now I'm going to go back here, select, save selection. I'm going to call it sign. And it's going to land as an alpha channel in my channels panel. And there it is. So now I want to cut. Now, whenever you have marching ants and you go and call up an adjustment layer, it automatically makes the layer mask in the shape of the marching ants because it defaults to a layer mask being attached to your adjustment layer. Now you can change that. I don't like to. Some people really do like to. I don't. I like to leave it. So I'm going to go back to hue saturation. I'm going to colorize. I'm going to make the sign blue. Now, where's the green colors of my cafe letters? They're not there. So I'm first, the first thing I'm going to do is the easy thing. Drag the layer, and I, I'm also going to name, even though it says hue saturation, I'm going to leave hue, but I'm also going to call it cafe letters. So I know, and I'm going to call this sign, sign shape or something like that, sign shape. Very good idea, when, especially when you're first starting out. So I'm going to pull this up. So you can see the green, but the blue still affects the green. So this is where what we started with the lion. Now here's what we have to edit. <clears throat> we have to hold the option key or the alt key on the PC, click on the thumbnail of the mask of the sign. There it is. That's what it looks like. Well, we want to protect the letters from getting any of the color that we've given the sign. So in order to get these, there's a, we do have it in alpha channels, so we can get it that way. We can just drag the letters into this little tiny icon here, or we can hold the command key and click on the thumbnail of one of the masks that has the letters. I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm going to just drag it into here. See that? See the shape of the cafe letters? Now, in order to protect those letters, they have to be filled with black. Black conceals, white reveals. So I'm going to go to black, click OK, 
And now when I go back to RGB, everything should be, should look fine and no colors should change. Um, I don't need the marching ants anymore, so I'm going to do a Command D or deselect. And there's my sign. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Next, we're going to do the curtains. See the curtains on the window? I'm going to do those. Okay, so now we're going to get the curtains. Now, here's where it comes in really handy to make some alpha channels and some not. So I'm going to take my polygon lasso and make the shape of the curtain on the right. And I'm going to go up here and say Save Selection, Curtain Right. Then I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to go Command D or Control D on the PC. And I'm going to select the curtain in the middle. And we're going to do everything. We're going to color everything in this uh, project. So there's the middle curtain. Select, save selection, curtain, middle. You can name it whatever you want. Now, wa remember, watch here. This is where it's going to live. OK. So now we have the middle curtain and the right curtain I'm going to deselect. And now I'm going to, I don't need to save the left curtain because what is going to happen is I'm going to select the left curtain. And now I'm going to go to select, load selection, add to selection under operation, and do curtain right, okay. And then do the same thing again, load selection, Add to selection, curtain middle. Okay, now when I call up a color correction, it's automatically going to have this mask on it. So you'll have all three together. I mean, there does come a point where you don't need everything in here. But since you're just starting out, I would advise you don't start deleting stuff yet. So I will go over here this time to photo filter. And it defaults to warming filter. That one sometimes is a nice color. Um, so I can get a nice orange kind of curtain. And I see here I missed a spot. So I can take my zoom tool and zoom in. Now, because I have a layer mask, see the layer mask? I'm going to go back here. And um, I know right here that I need to paint on the mask. So I have to make sure I'm on the mask, get a paintbrush, paint with white, because I want to let the color come through, because I missed that part of the curtain. And lo and behold, there it is. I see a little spot here. This is how you can start. So I'm painting on the mask again. The bottom line to all this is you're never, ever doing anything on the original image. It's all on these layers. Double click the zoom tool to go back to 100%. And next I'm going to color the awning. So let's see here. Okay, so now we've done the curtains. Let's do the awning. I'm going to let's see here, get the polygon lasso, again, my easy fix. I'm going to click, click. Notice it's like a rubber band line. Click, click. Don't worry about the scallops. We're going to get those. Click, click. One button does not fit all in Photoshop. That's something you have to remember. Now we're ending where we started. See the little circle? If you don't see the circle, hold down the Command or Control key, and it will find it for you. Now you can see it's not perfect. We're going to fix it. There is the shape. 
And instead of um, saving this as an alpha channel, I think I'm just going to call up one of my um, adjustment layers. Somebody got, if I recall, now that we have the cloud color balance to work, I believe. I'm going to give it a try. Color balance. Okay. Let's see if we start messing around. Yep. See, this did not used to work. And now this is a much more robust system. So we'll have a pink awning. Notice I did not make an alpha channel, but the layer mask, I'm going to hold down the option key and click so you can see there is the alpha channel. Okay? More or less. It's a layer mask, but it would have been the same shape if I'd made an alpha channel. I'm going to click back here. I want to be able to fix this with a brush. Now I could get the brush like we have in the past and zoom in and I'm on the mask there and I've got to get the brush. What happened? I went to zoom here. Zoom. I'm going to make the brush a little smaller. I have to make sure I have black, not white, black on the end of my brush. And I can paint on the mask and I can see what I'm doing. That's one way to do it. There's another way to do it. When you're on a layer that has a layer mask, you'll see an italicized title. That means you haven't saved it as an alpha channel. I'm going to name this just so we don't get confused. Awning. And if I turn on the eyeball to this italicized awning, I get what looks like quick mask. So I am going to get, where am I, back onto the mask. I can actually paint, oop, I've got white. I need black or the X key. See? X key or the little arrows. So I need black. I need a slightly bigger brush. And I'm going to, I can also, this is also changing the shape of the mask. This is just another way to do it. I'm a little messy here. See, I got in here. So I'm going to take it down and get the white and say, okay, I want that scallop. I want that full scallop. So you can, you have so many ways of editing. Let me hold down. So I stay in the brush tool. I'm going to hit the space bar, the hand comes up temporarily. Now, I'm going to get the black by hitting the X key. See, there's black now in my color chip. Oh, whoa, okay. Hold on, somebody's um, a little interrupted. So I, if I want to fill this in with red so that only the awning selected, I need to have black on the end of my pen because it works like quick mask. See that? So now once I turn off the eyeball, this eyeball, the red will go away. But this is another way of editing a selection that some of you might find easier um, because you can see everything you're doing. And Okay, so if close enough, I want yours closer, of course, I'm going to turn off the eyeball color awning mask. And there you have it. Now everything looks nice and clean. Now oh, I see a few little spots there. Let's see. So that I would take away. I would add red there. And I think that's good enough for now. Yeah. So there's the awning. Hallelujah. Okay. So now we've got the curtains, the awning, the cafe sign. We're going to do the car next.
I believe I left off saying you were going to work on the car. Now, I want you to begin, because now as, as we're building up alpha channels and layer masks, to see the advantage of being able to add to, take away from layer masks, basically edit layer masks. Once you've made something, you can use that shape that you've already made and saved in either layer mask or alpha channel form to help create other parts of the pictures and you'll start to see that now. First I'm going to do the card quick and dirty basically with the polygon lasso tool, my rubber band tool. We haven't learned the pen tool. If we had, we might be using that, but I think my dad had this car when we were little. I don't know. Convertible. Um, white, I think. Of course, I don't know much about cars, so maybe not. Who knows? So I'm going kind of up. And I'm ultimately going to remove the bumper from this because I like to make it a shiny chrome. But right now I'm just going to get the whole body, and then I'll worry about editing the mask. The beauty of this is, again, is it's non-destructive to the picture and it's always editable. You shall see. Okay, let's make the car color. I think I'll go back to hue saturation. And now it puts that shape, that icon there. I'm going to click colorize. And I'm going to make this car a nice... red. Well, that's not so nice. Let's see. There we go. We have a red car. Terrific. Now, I have seen students go to great lengths. They separate out these little lights here. We are going to separate out the headlights. I'm, some of you who are in my class, we may not be doing this in the exact order. We're going to cut out the windows because they're clear and you want to see the building behind them. So there's a lot, and there's a lot of touch up we can do, but we don't have to worry about that because with layer masks, we can touch it up quite easily. So I'm going to leave it like that for right now. I want to show you what this mask looks like. Well, if you hold down the command key and click on the mask, you get the marching ants. I'm going to go command D, but if you hold on the option key, that's what the mask looks like right now. However, I'm going to go back here to RGB and say, okay, let's look at everything. We don't want the window in there. We don't want the um, headlights in there. I usually do the headlights first, but whatever. So I'm going to get the elliptical marquee. I'm going to make, let me zoom in here for a second. There's my zoom tool. I'm going to get, I have the elliptical marquee, I'm going to zoom in, hold the shift and the option, that would be shift and all in the PC, and get pretty close. When I move my cursor in here, that's that move, that one with the white arrow and the dotted lines is move selection, not object. So I'm, uh, there's, and that looks pretty darn good. We could transform selection right here, if it wasn't, this is not the same as free transform or transform shape, but this looks pretty good. So I'm going to go to save, save selection. It will save it in the alpha channels. I will call it right headlight. And now I'll go back to the move tool. If you remember the RGB exercise, first you have to click, then you hit the shift key and it'll hold it in a horizontal. We have to actually, it's not a perfect horizontal. So if I move my cursor where I have the move selection tool, I can use the arrows on my keyboard to nudge it into place. So now I'm going to go select, load selection, add to selection, and I'm going to add, oh, it was the left headlight. Well, I gave it my bad. Okay, so now I've got the two headlights. So first of all, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go to the layer mask of the car. I'm going to hold down the option key so you can see what's happening. See the two headlights? I don't want them to pick up any light or color from anything except the 
adjustment layer I am ultimately going to give them. So I'm going, and because the car is right over them or under them, it can alter the color. So I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, fill it with black. That conceals, that protects the headlights from the color of the car. And then I'm going to go back here. See, now it's the gray. I'm going to leave them there because I want to make them a different color. So what should I use? Color balance. So a lot of these look like they might work now. Things have changed in the cloud. I'm going to go to photo filter though. I'm going to change it to, oops, a yellow. There we go. And I'm going to, there we go make the glass a yellow color, the yellow headlights. Now, that's great. Now I need to make the windows clear. So I'm going to work back on the mask of the car. I'm going to get my polygon lasso tool. Oh, I must have the caps lock on. If you ever see this crosshair and you don't like it, you might have your caps lock on. So I'm going to undo it. There we go. Now I can see my tool. So there is that window. And I'm, oops, I didn't, it didn't find the beginning. There's the circle, there it is. So now I'm going to go to edit, fill, fill with black. Now I'm gonna get this back window and this is, Mind you, I am on the, the layer and the thumbnail of the car, so it's doing it on the car. Image, oops, I'm, edit, fill, black, okay. Now I'm gonna do the back window, whoops. And I'm going to fill that. And you can go back and do detail upon detail, mind you. This is going to give you an infinite number of powerful to tools to use. I'm going to get this little bit of a back window. There's not much showing because of the angle. Probably didn't even, let's see. And edit, fill, black, okay. And then there's a tiny bit of... And I may ultimately get the um, the rear view mirror. This is in the days when they only had one rear view mirror on the side. And I'm going to go to edit fill. Okay. So there you have it. See there, I'm going to probably give this a color too. This, this headlight, I mean this rear view mirror. Command D or select deselect. And now when I make the building a color, that's what you'll see through these windows. I'm going to now get the entire grill. I'm going to eventually edit different parts of the grill, but I'm going to get the entire grill. I'm going to edit the license plate. You have former students of mine to thank for that one. So the more you do, the better your grade, of course. So there's that, and I'm going to say, I don't want this to be red. I'm going to fill in the layer mask with black, fill, black. There you go. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to change some of the stuff in here, but this part, I want to see it really look chrome. So I'm going to get the levels adjustment, and I'm going to just crush it. See how bright, nice and that's too dark, bright, bright, bright. So there's my chrome. Now I'm going to hmm, take out of the chrome. I don't want this as part of the chrome. I'm going to get the marquee tool. I'm going to get, oh my God. Oh, I'm in the elliptical. I need to be in the rectangular marquee. I'm going to get these headlights because I'm going to make those a color. Oh, forgot to hold the shift key. This would be 
a, a situation where you could do it like the headlights. You could save one and then bring the other one in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill. I'm going to levels. I want to make sure this levels is the bumper. Chrome bumper. All right, there you have it. Now, I'm going to fill the bumper with what color? Yeah, black. So now, watch, it'll get duller. See? But now, I'm going to go over here and get color balance. I'm going to turn those lights like a cyan color. All right, that's cool. Now I want to do the license plate. So I'm going to stick with my marquee tool. And I am going to go back to my bumper because I don't want it covered with the bumper um, intense layer, uh, levels. I'm going to go to edit fill, black. Now it's back to normal. So first, I'm going to um, give it a blue color. I think I'll go to Hue Saturation, Colorize, go blue, because that's the color license plate it used to be in California. Not that, it's more of a that blue. Okay, so there's the, this is the plate. I'm gonna go Hue and I'm gonna put plate in. So now we've got the plate. Now we need to change the color of the numbers. The easiest way to do this is I'm on the plate. This is the plate. Look, it's pretty tiny, right? I think the easiest way to do this, you may find a better way. Students do. I'm going to go onto the layer mask. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. It doesn't look perfect close up, but you can't tell from far away. See how pixelated it is? I'm going to get a little brush. I might even get a pencil. Let's see. There we go, pencil. Um, maybe a little too small. I want to hit the right bracket. No, oh, that might be too big. Pencil, remember, is always hard edge. So I'm just painting away. interesting hmm. so there's the letters okay now I want these letters see if I invert this hmm, I don't know if this is gonna work yeah inverse is it gonna get everything but the letters I don't know that could be a problem yeah see it's got the whole thing so when I, hmm, so if I go to um, add a color to it, it's going to add a color to the whole picture. See? Well, that's not good. So that's not the best way I should have done that. Hmm, I'm, I'm actually on the wrong one. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to, okay, there's that. Well, actually, let's see if I make that. Hmm. I'm going to make that. Oh, that didn't work. Did it? Oh, I know. I'll get. Now, let's see what we have. I, I, I got a layer mask. Ah, there's the layer mask. So if I invert the color and make all of the rest of, of this is really getting too complicated. I hope it's not too complicated. See, uh, the only thing I want to get the color are the letters on the license plate. So I have to make everything else black. So if I hold the shift key and start just drawing with rectangles anywhere that doesn't have the numbers, I'm getting close to my goal. There we go. There we go. Why is it all over? There we go. There we go. 
and then I'm going to fill it with black. There we go. So there is, if I zoom in even tighter, see there's a few little specks. I'm going to go get my brush, black, and paint out this stuff because this stuff may or may not show, but when I work in TV, I don't trust it. I'm afraid these little goobers are going to show on the air. Um, so now we've got this. And this is the hue saturation for the numbers on plate. Let's see. When you start to recognize the icons, it helps. I don't know all of them, but a lot of them I do now. When they first introduced them, I was kind of like, oh, one more thing to learn, right? So I'm going to add saturation. I don't want red. I want orange or maybe even closer to yellow. And then when I go back to 100%, it actually looks like the license plate was done. The lights were done. Oh, we have this part right here. So I'm just going to get the elliptical marquee. And hang on a sec. Oh, good. I'm not in pause, am I? No, I hope not. <laughs> um, I'm going to draw a little circle there. I'm going to go to the car. Where's the car? Car, car, car. Here it is. And I didn't label it. See? Oops. Car. Body. And I am going to add... Let's see. To the car body, I'm going to just fill that with black. Okay. And then I'm going to get hues, uh, levels. So that's the chrome too. That'll be chrome. Key. I mean, you know, there's a point at which you can have fun with this. I promise, I promise you. <laughs> um, a really good tool to use for the building or any skyline is the polygon lasso. Now, again, you don't have to worry about all the stuff that's here because you've got all the masks already made. And if it's covering something that exists, you just get the shape of the mask. And I'll show you the shape of the mask. For example, we're going to have to make the phone pole, but... You just don't have to be as careful because all of this is editable. I'm going to go right across the car because I already have the shape of the car. Well, let's see. I'm going to go right here and go do the building. There we go. Up here, we're going to have to do the paper boxes. We'll do those separate. Good enough. Just trust me, if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. You're not doing anything. You're not destroying any original pixels. Yay! Okay, let's let's make this a kind of let's see if we can make it an Adobe pink color, the building. Um let's see. Let's see. That's interesting. Hmm. That's a good color. Now we're going to add. See, so now we have that sort of California adobe pink color. I don't know if this is in California, quite frankly. We haven't done the cocktail sign. You'll do that on your own. Um, but notice... If I turn off the eyeball, it changes the color of the car, changes the color of the curtains. Maybe we should make it even more intense. So you can see um, what's going on. Let's see. Yeah, see that? So we got this really pink building and it's affecting everything. So I'm actually going to, believe it or not, move it to the top, but I'm going to select all the things that I don't want to get that color. So let's start with something basic, like 
are curtains. If I hold the command key, click on the layer mask for the curtains, see that? I haven't even left the building, so to speak. I'm going to put BLVG. BLVG. I am going to fill this with, let's see, edit. Oh, well, I'm not on the mask. I have to be on the mask. Edit fill. Black. Protect it. And there now, they're the original color. And this is how it's changed the building. Okay? All right. Next, I'm going to get, where is that awning? Here's the awning. Hold the command key, click the awning. I'm going to go back here. I want to show you what how it happens. I'm going to go edit, fill, black. And then we're going to go back here. And there is the awning in its original color. Car, bumper. I can click the bumper. I can hold the shift key and click the car. I can hold the shift key while I'm clicking the headlights. I can click the, I, and I'm still holding the shift key because I want, I don't want anything in here to get the color of the building. Now, I don't know if I have everything. It doesn't quite look like it. Um, and I didn't, shame on me, label everything. I want to add that. Numbers on plate. There. Numbers on plate. Where are my headlights? That does look like my headlights. Doesn't seem to be uh, doing the job. So I'm going to just fill this with black. See what happens. Edit. Oops, I have to be on the mat layer mask. Edit. Fill. Black. Okay. So now that's all got the right color. But where... Let me see. Command D. My headlights, I don't believe. Let's see. Oh, those are those headlights. Those are those headlights. Okay. I'm going to click those. I'm going to back on the building. Edit. Fill. Black. Okay. There. See, they're more yellow. So I did not get those headlights first time around. But now, see, you can see the building through here. Um, oh, the sign. How could I forget the sign? Click. Here's the thumbnail for the sign with the cafe letters cut out. But I want to hold the shift key and have both the whole thing. Again, on the building, I'm taking, I'm hiding it from the color of the building. I go to edit, fill. And now that's got its normal color. We've got a lot more work to do here. And the more work you do, trust me, the better your grade. Okay. I know that's annoying to hear, but too bad. Okay. So I'm going to go down this way. And I'm going to be on the building. Edit, fill. There we go. So now I, you know, a lot of times I do that first. Um, I want to do the street. I think I'll do the street next before I do these. And I want to do the ground. I want, I'm going to change the color of this pile of dirt. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to go boom. Oops, boom, boom, boom. It doesn't matter what happens outside the picture frame, by the way. Oh, I've got all my, my dog showing. I don't want After Effects opening. Force quit. Come on. I'm going to hide the dock. I meant to hide the dock. I got waylaid. And there's all my mail. Ah! Okay. So all I have to do is hold the shift key to add to this. Okay, so I'm going to add to this. Um, and there's the street. Oh, that's not good. i got to get that. I'm holding the shift key, by the way. You can probably see it. See, we just have to add this bit to it. Hold. There we go. So, I didn't 
I've got part of the car in there. I'm not going to worry about it because I've already got the shape of the car. So I'm going to go levels. I'm going to really darken it. See? So there, um, it's kind of a tarry looking street. Not there. That's better. Now, I've got the street, but I really don't want that car as part of it. So I'm going to hold down the command key, click on the layer mask for the car, hold the shift key, click the layer mask for the bumper, click the layer mask, just in case, there and there, the lights, all that stuff. Um, where's that stupid side mirror, which I didn't name? There we go. I think that's enough. And I'm going to go up here and to the levels of the street and edit fill with black. And now it brought the color back. I'm going to call this asphalt levels. So, you know, you can use levels for a lot of things, as a lot of things, asphalt. So there's, there's my street. Now let's say I want to get this dirt. Um, I'm just going to go around here, and I'm going to take this. I would maybe do this by hand with the, uh, with the painting, you know, the quick mask tool, but since I've got this tool, I'm going to go here. I'm going, it's, it's on the building again. There's a lot of things that have to be edited out of the building. Fill so with black. And then I'm going to make the dirt its own color. So let's see. I don't remember. I know a lot more things work with uh, Creative Cloud. Let's see if uh, anything, if, well, Channel Mixer work. Channel Mixer does work. Wow. That's cool. Wow. I'm impressed. Thank you, Adobe. There we go. So we have blue dirt. And then um, I'm going to put this, wow, this is really awesome. Dirt. And I mean, I do love this program. <laughs> then I'm going to make the sidewalk. And I don't remember if I included, I still haven't made the, I have to make the paper things, you know, even though they don't have very many of them anymore. This is an old fashioned town. So let's go hmm. here, here. We're getting the sidewalk. Yeah. Remember, if you make a mistake, there's so many ways around it because, again, you're non-destructive editing. I don't remember where I began, so I'm going to hold that. Yeah, see, there's some goobers there. I'm going to color the sidewalk with photo filter. And I'm going to change it to mm -hmm, deep yellow, maybe. Let's see, deep yellow. And whoa, that's pretty intense. Yeah. Now, clearly, this needs to be fixed. I'm just going to get the paintbrush and say, not say, but paint. Let's see. Do I need white? I think I might need white. Let me zoom in here. I'm going to need both white and black. I need white here. See? Because it's black and white. And I need black because I don't want it on the dirt. I don't want it on the pink building. And then I didn't make it perfect. You're really better off getting... Now, this dirt... Yeah. So there's the dirt. Boom. We're getting there. Now, let's see what else. This is not simple, so don't think it's simple. I'm going to get this box that holds a newspaper right now. I'm going to use, again, I use the polygon lasso. It's just straight lines. Um, if you have trouble with it, you can always get a hold of me if you're one of my students. And I can... I don't spend a lot of time teaching it to you because there's not that much to it. There's the paper box. I'm going to go up here to the top because it always puts a new layer on top of everything else. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to get hue saturation again. I'm going to make this a... Huh. 
Ah, oh, let's see. How do we? That doesn't there. Eh, not so good. Um, let's see if we change the preset yellow boost. Woo! That's weird. I haven't used that. Strong saturation. I don't want the windows to have color though. I want the windows to pick up um, old style. I have I'm messing with these for the first time. Congratulations. I'm going to go to default right now. I'm going to go to colorize. And I am going to saturate. And let's go back here and saturate. That's good enough. Okay. And you can do whatever you want. I'm going to use the polygon because it gives me more flexibility, but you can use any tool you want. There's that. Hold the shift key to add to selection. Very important. Using different selection tools and adding to and taking away from selection. It'll make your life easier once you understand it. Edit fill, black, and now see, you can see right through it to the color of the sidewalk, which is not what we want. Where's the sidewalk? Here's the sidewalk. Don't forget to add sidewalk, walk, and I'm going to have to fill that with black too. Oops, have to be on the, where's walk? I just named it. Isn't that the walk? Huh. Okay. Well, that looks like the walk to me. So I'm going to go to edit, fill, black. Ah, there I was on. Yeah, there, there, there. That's where I needed to be. Now I do have the shape of, of, of this paper box and I don't want this on there. So I can get black. Oops, do I have black? No, I have white. Black. Is it on here or is it on here? Oh, it's because I have marching ants. Duh. Still, oh, I've got white. There we go. When in doubt, get a different color. Get white or black. Like I said, it's best for you to stick with white and black, and I have to do that here too because the yellow of the walkway is coming through. Wherever you see something coming through that shouldn't, it's probably coming through from another colorizing thing that you did. Now, we really should see these. We really should see the building through these. And the reason we're not is because the building doesn't have these as black. So I'm going to get there, the magic wand, the magic, the magic wand. I'm going to go to the building. I'm going to fill this part with black. Okay. Oh, didn't work. Let's try the sidewalk. Oh, this is when this happens. Fill black. So why am I not getting, did I do this photo filter? Huh? Maybe I need to fill it with white to let the color through. Let's see. Edit, fill, when in doubt, try something different. Okay, there it is. I was going in the wrong direction. I want the pink to come through. Usually I'm hiding it, but I wanted it to come through. So I'm going to take, and I'm going to also paint on this mask, on the this mask, this building mask with white. So that I don't have great, there you go, there I go. Oh, there we go. So now I've got that and I want to fix this paper box here. Um, I'll do that later. I'm, I do want to do a few more things. As, and I think you're getting the drift. I'm going to do the sky. Again, building, 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 building. Because I'm really selecting the sky. This time I'm going to go up instead of down. See, I, I, well, down, down, down. Let's see. 
down, down this way, up, and I have the pole. Where's my, oh, I should have gone back up here. This is where I started. There. Now, that's the sky. I'm going to go to color balance, and I'm going to give it a sky, a purple sky. So there we have color balance too. And mind you, you can always change this. Always, always, always. I mean, we have done nothing, trust me, to the original image. Nothing. These are all adjustment layers with masks. All of them. If, you, if I decide I don't want that car red, where's the car? Here's the car. I don't want it red. Double click the icon to get the editing of hue saturation and I'm changing the color of that car. Now I made it blue. Okay? All right. Now, one thing I have to do is the telephone pole. So I'm going to go in here with my, you can use the rectangle, I'm going to use the polygon. I'm going to make this basically quick and dirty because I'm running out of time and I think I've done enough of this that you should get the picture. Um, and you can always remember, you can always edit it. Nothing is cast in stone. You know when you buy something really expensive and you take months to equivocate? Should I buy it? Should I buy it? And I can't buy another one for like a year, for like five, ten years. Um, this is not that. This gives you ultimate freedom. So this is far from perfect. This is actually, I'm kind of lost here. I'm going to hold down this. There we go. So this is the pole. I'm going to go all the way to the top here and put the pole in here. I'm going to have to delete the pole from the sky anyway. But I want to just make the pole first. So let's see. I think I'll make the pole with hue saturation. Now it'll give me a more, uh, here is where it'll give me an idea of what the color truly is. So there's the pole. I'm going to saturate it. I want it to be more brown. You don't have to make them realistic at all. I, I really don't care. Um, let's see, that's very orange. Take a little red out. There. Well, I'll leave it like that. Now, actually it looks okay, but I would, I would go like this and go to the sky and fill that with black just to be on the safe side. Because it might be impacting the color. It says white, change it to black, okay. Now see all this crap? It's not perfect. Command D to deselect. I'm just going to go in here, highlight this. Remember in our channels how we did the awning? There, I'm going to get my paintbrush and with black, I'm going to cover this part. See that? Black, black, black with this part. And then I'm going to get white. So see, I'm, I'm touching up the mask, believe it or not. When we, this goes to marching ants, this is going to be so much cleaner. This is why you want to start learning how to use the tools in concert with each other. Now, this is kind of crappy, right? Because on the sky, I'm going to have to now paint in the color. So that means I have to paint white where it looks all gray and weird. Um, so I should have saved that. Shame on me. But all I have to do is I'm on the mask for the sky. I've got white. So let's see if we can get the purple there. Is the purple coming through? So you see we're letting purple, we're letting color in, we're hiding color. We're letting object in, we're hiding object. That's what layer masks do. 
Alpha Channels helps you with the working mode and editing. If you have to, if I'm ever unsure, I save stuff in here. The curtains, it came in totally handy rather than trying to do it perfect. The longer you do Photoshop, some of these things you will be able to do without, with, you know, on the fly. But you know what? Why bother when it would be so much easier to make it easy? I know, it sounds crazy like. I think you should go easy. Now, I haven't gotten the whole thing, but this paper thing should not be this yellow color. So I'm up here. I'm going to go above the headlight. I'm going to get a hue set. You have to get a new one each time. Hue saturation, colorize. That's an ugly color. I don't use lightness and darkness that much with colorize because it kind of gets rid of the... Uh, differentiation. I'll make that that sort of red color. Now, I can see some things that really do need to be fixed on this one. Um, for example, this should be white. I should paint with white so the red comes through. I should paint with black so the building comes through. I don't know what's coming through. Yellow? From what? The floor, mm. I'm going to have to select those, hold the shift key, select that. Where's my building? Uh, that's the sky. There's my building. If I fill that with black, no, white. If I fill that with white, let's see. Fill, edit, fill, white. Okay, yeah. No? Maybe let's see, fill it with black. I don't think that's right. Why is it not getting the building color? Well, let me try. Edit, fill with black? That's not right. What's going on here? It's not the asphalt. It's not the sky. Where's the sidewalk? This sidewalk. This is it. So if I fill that with black, edit, fill, black. Ah, there we go. And then the building, edit, fill, white. Now, see, so you have to work sometimes on more than one mask to get. Now this thing should really be this color. Oops. This green thing. So let's see if I can get that. This is a uh, or paper box, paper box, and I'm just going to do this with a paintbrush, see if it'll work. Uh, I should do it. Here's the paper box that's green. I'm going to do it on that so it doesn't, so I have to, there. And now on the paper box that's red, I should make it white so that the color comes through. There we go. Color comes through or hide color. White color comes through. Black hides color. Now, there's a lot of other things you can do on here. I've had people make each building a different color, do the windows and the window frames, do this window frame. I'm not going to do every single thing. This is the tutorial. It's long enough and it covers a lot of stuff. So I hope this helps you. You might have to go forward and back and pause, but you, if you do, you will really have a good grasp on color correction, editing layer masks, and using alpha channels. And trust me, more than half the jobs out there, you have to understand those concepts. So you'll be ahead of the game. Good luck.